currently I'm a fourth year student um, and I came to UC Merced with a declared major in computer science, um, the computer science engineering. I, you know, I've always been fascinated with technology. I've always really enjoyed playing around with my computer, seeing different aspects aside from changing the desktop web page, right? Or changing the, the background color. Um, so I, in high school, I participated in the summer immersion program for Girls of Code, as well as my computer science academy, my, my school offered. And I also participated in, in um, Cyber Patriots. So there's always been that fascination of technology within me. And after some struggles with uh, college adjusting as a first generation student, um, I actually had to switch majors. I switched from computer science engineering to sociology. Now, even when doing the switch and participating with different groups on campus, I was always asked, how is sociology connected to computer science in general? Or what, that was a giant leap or, you know, all, the, all these misconceptions of both technology and sociology being worlds apart. So today I wanna help bridge these two worlds together. And as I mentioned, I, I noticed a large gap between the two. Um, I wanted to bridge that gap to help others understand that unity is best for innovation, right? Um, we are growing in an age where technology is advancing rapidly. And with last year's occurrence, we learned that we need to advance with it as well, right? And so with COVID-19, we saw it at a grander scale. There's uh, a term in sociology or human resources that's called technology fatigue. Now, technology fatigue has been now deemed as Zoom fatigue, as many of us have felt, which is a feeling of mental or physical overwhelmness uh, and emotional toll, honestly, after being hours and hours on the screen, doing meetings, doing classes. And so this, you know, key term now, Zoom, Zoom fatigue, it makes it, makes it harder to do an equal or, or greater amount of work since everything's online and many of us haven't uh, used our computers more than just to, you know, write a paper. Um, I saw teachers struggle, students struggle, uh, and we were able to notice the discrepancies uh, within the school by how many have a laptop or internet. And Zoom fatigue actually affected a lot of businesses that aren't very tech-centered, that uh, workers and employers who haven't usually spent that many, many hours on a computer. Now for a developing team, the pandemic really didn't do much difference. The hours of coding can be done at home or in an office. And uh, that's once again, what I wanna point in this, in this talk. During my college years, I participated in, this, in an interdisciplinary org called the Q Project. We do events in the community of Merced, and we try to focus all these events in helping our children grow a passion for STEM education and STEM learning, as well as cyber hygiene and cyber education. Um, through this, I've learned I need every aspect of sociology in a tech environment. Students are grown to choose between the both either social sciences or a tech education. And so I want to help change that. Instead of an or mindset, I want to help create an and mindset where we mix and unite both of these to create a more holistic student as well as a more, more holistic employer. Starting from higher education, we can create a more effective world by uniting both of these schools instead of having separate and division within each other. As a young woman going in as a, a CSC declared ma major, I, it was easily noticeable the gender gap in technology. Programs such as Girls with Code aim to close that gender gap through early exposure in high school. And these high school activities were my first introduction to technology that of course differed to the level of education needed to for a college degree in computer science engineering. Now, when I participated in my classes, of course, I didn't see many like me. I'm a Latinx woman and many of the times 
few, the few that were there, few women that were there, were from very different backgrounds than me. They were either financially fortunate or had gone into a computer science major because they have done computer camps or computer coding camps that allowed them to advance their education. This was another thing I lacked um, for my college education. And so looking at these factors and other personal factors, I began questioning why I liked coding. I had the idea that tech is the way, ingrained in my aspiration for a better life and better resources. Moving to a social science major, I knew I didn't want to leave the technology world I grew to love, right? But here I also saw the discrepancies and the division between the School of Engineering and the School of Natural Sciences. And so this is where the idea of bridging the gap grew. I noticed my social sciences class stuck to a traditional way of teaching, where our computers were just used to turn in papers, to log on to Canvas, and so on. Even when going to Best Buy, you can see this division. After my computer had broken down, I went there to get a new computer. I was asked, what's your major? And as I answered, I am a sociology major, the associate mentioned, well, then we'll just get you this more simplistic computer since all you need to do is just write and that's it. Once again, sociology, or at least in my, in my case, sociology, use technology only as uh, a medium instead of something we can create from. The only time light coding was presented in our classes was in a statistics class, where even then we can tell, or at least I could tell, the difficulty everyone was having when doing this light coding. Once again, because we stray away from technology and any of that type of resource. Sadly, in higher education for social sciences, we're only touching the bare minimum when we should be striving to go beyond that. And so I thought to myself during that one class, do I have to choose? Do I choose sociology or do I choose technology? Am I doing the right path by going through social sciences? Should I have stuck to technology? and so on. I realized that I shouldn't be choosing, rather integrating both of these and creating something better. There's still that stereotype of the lonely coder in some basement in a full dark room or something like that and just hacking away. But there's also that you know, mentality of a social science major partying, not really taking serious what's going on on campus and just socializing. But when looking at giants in, in different industries, both tech and business-wise, this is hardly the reality. Large businesses are looking at a holistic student or wanting to find a holistic student, one that's ready for work or a graduate program, ready to work with any type of coding or tech-based jobs all while having the ability to talk and present at different levels within the company. This is the core idea with a Google job interview. Technology is constantly changing, updating and transforming the way we work. By staying in touch with my technology side through the, the Q project, I'm able to understand updates within technology as well as understand how tech project building works. This has allowed me to grow the ability of explaining certain terms that others might not be aware of. Take for example, Raspberry Pi. Now, many of us, when hearing the word Raspberry Pi, we might actually think of a pie on a window stilt cooling off, ready to eat. But for the developing team, Raspberry Pi has a whole different definition. They visualize most of the time a credit card sized chip with infinite possibilities. This is an example of how understanding just the terminology and the process can help 
us advance different projects. And I've done this when presenting to um, the student body for the Q project. When doing so and presenting to them, with this understanding, there's a better communication between business and tech. In our case, funding and projects. An always growing field in technology focused on this concept is HCI, human computer interaction. This field itself shows the need to understand social sciences and social behavior to produce a tech product that is able to be marketable, one, useful for our society and, and serve best to the target population. As a friend and colleague of mine, Armand Kapoor advocated in his published blog on RCSA, effective leaders are formatted at a young age. And this is done through early exposure. UC Merced's 2019-2020 data presents 28% of their student population electing an engineering major. Now, the entire school has boasted about being true representation of California's population, where we have about 55.5% of Hispanic students enrolled. And within those students that are enrolled, the majority is first generation. It is not new information that first generation Hispanic students are lacking in technology due to the scarce resources that we have in our communities. It's understanding that many of us tend to go for soft skills or advocation based education. And this is because we've been doing it for so long. We've been advocating for respect, acknowledgement, using communication skills to help represent our community. But trying to connect these skills to a tech-based platform can help us enhance our already known skills to a higher level, helping us establish financial security, as well as opening the door for other Hispanic youth who are trying to follow in our footsteps. We see technology advancing. And last year was a prime example for why we need to advance with it. Traditional lectures, traditional separation of schools are no longer fitting. Within our own school, we see that social sciences and engineering fight for funding, for time, for space. I ask that UC Merced leaders, students, and staff to help integrate both of these to integrate social sciences and technology. I imagine and hope for a world with well-rounded employers emerging from UC Merced and fortifying within our community. Ones that can understand both the difficulties of a developing team, as well as the importance of community engagement and feedback. For Google to exist, a good HR or liaison is needed as the core, as well as for a small business or large business to survive, cyber education is a priority. We need to unite and fortify these two, especially within our school and help bridge that gap. Let's bring two worlds together.